Welcome to Domain 2, Certification and Accreditation in the Risk Management Framework. This is an extensive uh, uh, body of knowledge. There's a lot of material to cover, so uh, let me uh, just go over real quickly what we're going to uh, cover exactly. We're going to talk about processes within the uh, Certification, Accreditation, and Risk Management Framework. We talk about specific roles and responsibilities, and a little bit about risk management, um, especially, specifically uh, around risk, man uh, risk management strategies and mitigation strategies, that, that kind of thing. And then we're also going to go into the, uh, the integration of systems security engineering and uh, the, uh, certification accreditation in the RMF in a little bit more detail. So let's get started with the U.S. government uh, processes. There are basically three that we're going to talk about. There's an overarching uh, NIACAP process, and then there's a DOD-specific version called the DICAP, and then one for civilian agencies uh, that's referred to as the NIST uh, RMF. So let's talk in general what uh, certification and accreditation does. You know, what's the purpose of certification and accreditation? Well, basically, you know, if you remember from our discussion about what the ICC does, the security engineer ensures that these security controls, these protections are put in place in the system. So there's that whole design process. Well, certification and accreditation is really a verification and validation process. And the verification and validation piece, uh, mostly uh, the verification that the control has been implemented properly, uh, is what we call certification. It's a comprehensive assessment of the management, operational, and technical security controls in an information system. The, uh, th this uh, evaluation is done on the actual IA capabilities of the system, so you need a production uh, system in order to be able to do the certification uh, uh, evaluation. Accreditation is really the validation. It's the, uh, the determination by someone uh, with the operational responsibility to accept risk on behalf of the organization. And so this uh, accreditation official, the person making the decision, uh, called uh, an authorizing authority or, um, uh, uh, or official or a DAA, a designated approving authority or a designated approval authority, um, this is the individual that evaluates all the information that the certification uh, uh, process yields, evaluates the certification recommendation, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and then makes the decision to either accept the risk uh, in total, uh, to accept it temporarily uh, with the expectation that some uh, uh, fixes or mitigations are going to take place, or to decide that the uh, operational risks of using the system outweigh the operational benefits. So what must be accredited? Well, basically, anything that processes or stores uh, in, uh, you know, sensitive information needs to be accredited. So that includes enclave circuits, uh, large uh, uh, IT systems, small IT systems, you know, infrastructure, pretty much everything. So what are some of the fun fundamentals uh, th that uh, we want to convey about certification and accreditation? Well, basically, certification and accreditation documentation is prepared by the system owner or the contractor that's supporting the system owner. Certification is provided by a security officer, and it's based on a security assessment of, of some type against specific levels of risk. The, in other words, there's a determination in advance that there's a certain amount of risk that will be accepted, that the rest of the risk will be controlled, and that uh, the certification process is basically to ensure that those controls are actually implemented adequately. So this, the accreditation, like I said, is provided by the uh, approval authority, the DAA. It's typically good for about three years. And uh, the recertification takes place either at the three-year point or it can take place if there's been a significant change uh, during that period uh, in the system, the boundary, or in some cases how it's used, or, you know, or the, uh, basically the intended um, uh, environment in which it should be used. So let's talk a little bit about how we apply the, CA, the, the CNA methodology and uh, the risk management framework. As I said, there are three uh, basic uh, processes or methodologies. We're going to talk just a little bit about NICAP because it's somewhat dated. It, it, uh, it was basically uh, developed and promulgated uh, during the, the era of DITSCAP. And so you'll see that some of the terms are very similar to the old DITSCAP terms. But, but NICAP is a, is a four-step CNA process where it, it consists of definition, verification, validation, and post-accreditation. Definition is basically where you talk about, okay, what are the security requirements? What protection needs to be provided? Uh, what kinds of documentation is going to be uh, provided? And how is the uh, testing going to be done? 
then phase two verification is basically the, the implementation and the testing to ensure that the controls have been uh, implemented properly. Phase three validation is where they do the, um, the final assessment and uh, the uh, uh, relative risks are determined based upon um, you know, multiple factors, operational factors, you know, technical factors, you know, how, how, th how things are aggregated, maybe changes in the requirements. But, but ultimately, there's a, an assessment of the residual risk and then a recommendation is made to the DAA uh, to uh, basically accredit the uh, system.